I'm gonna see if this starts. It's a Toyota Hilux. Apparently there's no power. Over 2,000 RPM, 2,500 RPM. It's actually terrible. Got a Hilux, it's a bit reeky. So I got the long crank time. I'm gonna use the lunge this time. Let's see if it can help me with this diagnostic. Taking that EOBD and there's no fault codes. Maybe get a quick look at the life data and see what's going on. Okay, I'll just select all. I started this up, I think I started it from cold, judging by how long it took to start. I do have 41 degrees, so that might... I'll have to check the temperature. It's showing cold on the dash. I suppose that's still quite cold, though. EGR error keeps changing. Hardly a huge amount of error, though. Equivalence ratio should be around one, and it's not. Fuel rail pressure. Now we're in the last list of these. Got two fault codes, one current, one history, they're both the same fault code, startability. Malfunction, which makes sense, it didn't want to start. But nothing for the lack of power. Mass airflow right here, let's see what goes on with that one. 0 0.31, the engine's up. The engine started, starts better this time. It's actually running. It takes a while to refresh, but I did choose all data pits, so that's okay. So, okay. I didn't see anything going high and then dropping down like the EGR starts closed and then opens up. Looks like it was open already. Turn off the subject a bit, but it's more for the long crank time. Got the test light back to front in a way. I've connected to battery positive. Disconnected right here at the glow plugs. So straight away we know the glow plugs are okay. As long as they're getting power. Could be another thing, could be a relay fault. This is me blipping the throttle and looking at pressure, target boost pressure against actual pressure. And I've got 120 in what it actually is, but it's looking for 200. There's a bit of discrepancy. I'll have a look into that and see why. When I stop the engine, the target is sitting around about 100. I did get a drop right down to about 20 of actual pressure, as that, that will be as the intake flap closed, which is right, so it shuts the intake to stop the car, and then it's gone back up to around 80. So there is a slight difference in what they're, say, they're both saying to each other. So this might be something, might confirm our fault, that it is actually pressure related, it might just be the sensor. So what I'll do is put the vacuum gauge onto the sensor, apply pressure, and see if this reading matches what's on the gauge. This is going to be our pressure sensor, because it has a hose, and it goes into the intake. It also has some sort of a filter in the middle, 
So I'll check it first at the sensor, and then I'll check and see what pressure we have with the gauge on this side, and compare them in case it's just a blocked filter. Look at this turquoise one. It's not quite right at the moment. We want that to be up to 100. Get this up higher. There we go. That's right at a hundred. What are we on the scan tool? We're at hundred kPa. Scan tool says, looking at the blue one, that's about somewhere between one fifty and one eighty. Probably closer to 180, so we're going to be saying 170. You have to remember absolute pressure. It adds one bar onto it, so it would say it's one bar when it's atmospheric pressure outside and we're at sea level, so we would say it's zero outside of the car zero pressure in the air, but in reality there's one bar of pressure, so it should be one bar higher. If we look at the KPA, that's kind of around what it's expecting, as if it's taken into account and took off the one bar. It does look like that pressure sensor is faulty then, it's the wrong pressure. So I'm not, I'm not teed in, so the light gates will be wrong, I'm just connected into here, going into the intake manifold, so when I hit the throttle, hit the accelerator, when I hit the throttle, you watch the gauge there, Reven it, when I rev it up, when I hit the accelerator, we get pressure, so we know the turbo's producing pressure, and I'm going to connect the thing back up again, but it looks like we're getting pressure, but the map sensor's reading is manifold absolute pressure or the turbo boost pressure. That's out of sync to what it should be. We know that when we apply a certain pressure, it's not what's showing on the scan tool. And when we take the pressure away so it's atmospheric again, it's not what it is in reality. So that pressure sensor it's unreliable, so we're going to have to change that. Okay, I've got this back probe. Ignition on only 5 volts. I'll go to the next one. One volt, 1.1 1 .1 volt. We'll go to the last one. We've got a ground. I can check the ground, but I think that'll be believable. Got the green light lighting up. But I could unplug this and use my test light. And see if it lights brightly. Kind of like how I did the glow plugs before. So we'll take the test light. Battery positive. And check it works. And I can touch that T pin. It lights, so we know we know the ground wire is good. We know the supply is good. Back into that one. The signal 1.1 volts. Right, and back into the. I'll unplug it. It's gone down, so we know this is a pull-up voltage. Plug it back in. We'll start the car and see if it changes. In fact, I could have brought this with me, but the lead that I'm using into there is quite short, so I'll not be able to. I'll just start the car, look for a change on that. No 
not change, but you don't always get much of a change in pressure from engine up to engine on. Now what I've done is use this Gunson sensor simulator. I've got it set on 0 to 5 volts here, and on this wheel, this knob, it's the second one, it's actually showing 2 volts on that scale right there. But in reality, the scale's a bit off. It's only 1.4 volts. And going into the map sensor with it disconnected, and the wire is going into the signal. And the other side of the sensor simulator is going to ground. But if we look on here, this I can adjust this to make the voltage up or down to put it where we want it. So I want this reading, I'll put it about 1.3 there. What do we have? That's probably closer to one bar. So now what we know is, if it had 1.3 volts with the key on and the engine off, that would be right, but it's not. It's like 1 volt or 1.1, so we've just confirmed that that sensor right here is giving the wrong pressure. It's giving the wrong reading, the wrong output. And we also confirmed it with a vacuum and pressure pump. This kit here. This is some ways that I check a car when there's no fault codes. None that are going to help you anyway. No pressure. That's important. It needs to know what the pressure is so it can respond to it accordingly. And adjust the turbo variable vein. And I think I've just confirmed there is a fault. And we've proved what the voltage should be 1.3 volts, even though I don't know what it should be. I've proved what it should be with this sensor simulator. I hope you liked the way I tested this and Thanks for watching.